This film tells about the war between humans and sea monsters, where this war has been going on for hundreds of years. But all this happened because of the greed of humans, and this war was able to be reconciled by a girl named Macy. The story begins with Macy who lives in an orphanage. She loves reading sea monster story books to her friends. Among all the children, Macy is one of the stubborn ones and likes to act however she wants. At bedtime, her friends helped her sneak out of her bedroom window. The story continues in the middle of the sea in the morning. A hunting ship named Inevitable is busy chasing sea monsters. A young man named Jacob is monitoring a sea monster named Red Bluster. The captain named Crow has a grudge against the Red Bluster because 30 years ago, he blinded one of the captain's eyes. One of the adjutants named Sarah reported to the captain of the Red Bluster headed to the Sea of Dregmore. This opportunity was the day the captain had been waiting for. But suddenly, the crew reported that the hunting ship Jim Nicklebones was attacked by a monster and the ship needed help. Here the captain's heart is tested, between chasing the Red Bluster or changing course and helping Jim Nicklebone's ship. After being advised by Jake, then the captain ordered Miss Marino to change the direction of the ship. They arrived to help the ship Jim Nicklebones. The crew of the ship inevitably shoots fireworks to attract the sea monster's attention. And this action was successful. The monster immediately chased their ship. We then see all crew members busy preparing for a fighting position. The monster swam swiftly towards their ship. The cannon attacks from the ship couldn't injure the monsters. Seeing that, Jacob immediately took the spear and rose to a high position. He bravely speared the monster. The monster dived and they lost track of it. It turned out that he was hiding under the ship and immediately attacked the ship. The crew put up a fight. Jacob tried to help the crew and this time he managed to throw his spear right at the monster's head. But Jacob was hit by a blow from the monster's tentacle and fell into the sea. The monster tried to eat him, but Jacob fought back. Seeing that, the captain immediately helped Jacob. He took his spear and bravely jumped while throwing his spear into the monster's stomach. The sea monsters died and drowned. Before sinking to the bottom of the sea, the captain cut the horns of the monsters as evidence of their hunting success. They returned to their kingdom. All the residents were eager to welcome him, including Macy. That night they were all having a party when suddenly Macy slipped out of the window and immediately met Jacob. Macy has a goal. She asks Jacob to recruit her as a crew member and of course, Jacob refuses. The next day, they arrived at the palace, carrying evidence of their hunt in the form of monster horns. They were welcomed by the king and queen, but the queen was not satisfied with their hunt because the queen wanted the horns of the red bluster monster. There was a dispute between Captain Crow and Admiral Hornigold who was the captain of the Imperator. Finally, Jacob gave the idea that they race to catch the Red Bluster. And all agreed with the idea, and the race for the Red Bluster monster hunt began. They prepared a strategy to capture the Red Bluster. Before reaching their destination, Jacob found Macy hiding in a barrel of wine. After hearing Macy's explanation, the captain finally asked Sarah to look after Macy. Eventually, they reached the Sea of Dregmore and shot fireworks into the sky to lure the Red Bluster out. Red Bluster came out of hiding. He immediately attacked the inevitable ship. The crew fired cannons and threw spears tied with ropes, but Red Bluster was so clever that it made a circular motion that the ship was sucked into the whirlpool. Seeing this, Macy took the initiative to cut the spear rope stuck in the monster's body, but she was scolded for her action by the captain who ordered Jacob to stop Macy. Macy managed to break the rope, but they were both thrown into the sea and came face to face with the red bluster. Jacob and Macy managed to get into the rescue boat, but Captain Crow was so angry with Macy that he wanted to shoot Macy, but was blocked by Jacob. Suddenly the red bluster devoured their boat and disappeared into the sea. Miraculously they were not swallowed into his stomach. Jacob and Macy tried to find a way out, and they met a dead end. It turned out to be the nose of the red bluster. Red bluster headed to an island, 
feeling something in its nose. The monster sneezed, and Jacob and Macy got thrown out swinging on the ropes. Red Bluster ignored them as if they weren't a threat to him. The day became night, they looked for shelter. Back on the inevitable, Captain Crow still wants to hunt the Red Bluster, but Sarah says that if the ship is badly damaged, they must dock and repair the first. The captain ordered to direct the ship to the port of Mukash. We returned to Jacob and Macy. In the morning Macy saw a little blue monster who stole their fruit. Macy chased the monster, and it behaved very funnily, so Macy fed her and carried her. Suddenly Jacob appeared, and won't allow Macy to keep the monster. Jacob took Macy away, but Jacob accidentally stepped on the eggs on the ground, and suddenly they were followed by the baby monsters because they were mistaken for their mother. Finally, the real mother of the monster appeared and chased after them. Jacob and Macy ran to their boat and tried to escape from the monster, but suddenly from the sea came a big purple claw and it was a crab monster. Their boat was lifted, and the monster tried to eat Jacob. Suddenly, the red bluster appeared and the crab monster was surprised and so it released Jacob's boat. Finally, there was a fight between the crab monsters and the red bluster. Macy was very scared because she was on top of the crab monster's body. Seeing the red bluster cornered, Macy bravely helped the red bluster by jumping up and pulling the crab's eye. Right at that moment, Jacob grabbed his spear and threw it straight at the crab monster. Red Bluster seized the opportunity and didn't waste a time. It immediately bit and threw the crab monster. Jacob panicked looking for Macy who sank into the sea. It turned out that Macy was saved by the cute monster who had stolen their fruit. Macy tries to communicate with the Red Bluster to get them home. And it turned out that Red Bluster understood and wanted to take them home seeing that Macy was very happy. Jacob tried to tell Red Bluster to change its direction, but Red Bluster didn't understand what Jacob meant. Seeing that, Macy finally tried to help. It turned out that Red Bluster understood and immediately turned right. Macy saw Red Bluster's back full of spears from the inevitable ship's attack. She pulled out all the spears. The story then moves to the inevitable ship. The ship has arrived at the port of Mukash, and the captain's goal is to meet Gwen Batterby. The captain trades a deadly poison weapon for a curse that will happen to his life. Back again to Macy's story. Jacob tried to catch fish for their meal, but his efforts always failed. Seeing that, Red Bluster helped them get fish by creating a whirlpool with its body. All the fish swam jumping and could be caught by Macy immediately. Jacob's heart began to move. He helped Macy release the spear stuck in Red Bluster's body. In the evening, Jacob and Macy saw a history book about the war between humans and sea monsters. Macy began to doubt if the sea monster started the war. Suddenly the weather started to get worse. There was a storm and lightning strikes. Jacob and Macy took cover to the nose of the Red Bluster, where they were safe because the nose of the Red Bluster seemed to have a membrane on it. They could see the scenery in the sea and a lot of sunken shipwrecks. We return to the story of the inevitable ship. The ship has been installed with a deadly weapon that contains poison. The captain summoned Sarah to see the Riddleback migration which indicated they were afraid and were avoiding something. Captain Crow told Marino to change course south to the island of Rum Pepper because according to the captain, Riddleback migrated to escape the Red Bluster. By morning, Jacob and Macy had arrived at Rum Pepper Island. When they arrived at the beach, Jacob promised the Red Bluster not to do any more monster hunting. They also said goodbye to Red Bluster and blew the little monster. Suddenly Red Bluster detected the Imperator hunting ship and attacked because it considers it a threat. The Imperator was destroyed by the Red Bluster and was about to attack Admiral Hornigal but was stopped by Jacob with rifle fire. Red Bluster saw Macy fainted and tried to approach her. The monster seemed to have calmed down, but suddenly the inevitable ship appeared. Seeing the presence of the hunting ship, Red Bluster once again becomes angry and immediately attacks the ship. Captain Crow prepared to attack Red Bluster with a poison weapon. He fired his weapon and hit Red Bluster's body directly. 
Instantly Red Bluster becomes weak and helpless. He was then tied with a rope and pulled to the palace. The captain saw a small boat approaching and it turned out to be Jacob carrying Macy who then fainted again. On the ship, Jacob tells Captain Crow about his experiences with the Red Bluster and promises not to hunt monsters again. But the captain didn't believe it and didn't want to let go of the Red Bluster. They also continued their journey to White Rock Castle to meet the king and queen. In a state of helplessness, the Red Bluster was towed by the ship. In the morning the inevitable ship had reached its destination. Macy tried to find a way out of her room. Suddenly Blue appeared from the water and opened the window so Macy could get out of her room. Macy saw the royal emblem at the entrance, and immediately she saw a match in the history books. It turned out that all history books were written by this kingdom. Slowly the red bluster was pulled into the kingdom's territory. Macy was unfortunate to see the condition of the red bluster that was bound so helpless. She also bravely tried to cut the rope that tied the red blaster's body. All the residents along with the king and queen were astonished to see the inevitable ship catch the red bluster. Finally, the queen praised Captain Crow for successfully hunting the red bluster. The captain was very proud of his results. He planned to kill the red bluster in front of them, but just as he was about to plunge his spear, his action was stopped by Jacob. Captain Crow did not accept Jacob's attitude. So a fight broke out between them, Jacob lost and fell into the water. The action of Macy cutting the rope was noticed by Sarah, and apparently, Sarah changed her mind. She then helped Macy cut the rope that tied the red bluster. Finally, the red bluster was able to break free and tried to attack the captain, but was stopped by Macy. Seeing that, everyone was stunned silent. A fierce sea monster can be controlled by a small child. Jacob took the captain's spear and broke the spear. Macy also explained to all the residents, if the war between humans and monsters was a human error, humans were the ones who started it. After that, all residents support and believe in Macy. This is the end of the story of this movie. What a great story the movie has brought. Stay tuned for another video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button for more videos like this. Thanks for watching our video.